The following film, although fictionalized, was inspired by actual events. Morning, Mr. Chapin. Busy day, Jessica. No time to lie in bed. Man, you're up early. Oh, I know you're not really asleep. Yes, I am. We have to be at the office in 10 minutes. I'm taking a sick day. Tell the boss I've got malaria. I am the boss, and so are you. Mm, I keep forgetting whose idea was it to start this business anyway. My love, today is Thursday. What starts tomorrow? Oh, yes. Ten days with no phones, no, no faxes, faxes, no, no beepers. beepers. I promise. You promise it won't be five years before our next vacation? You sorry you married a working man? Absolutely. Oh. I'm getting dressed. Be back at the office doing paperwork. Well, I heard the call. I was passing by. You mind? Not at all. I can always use the voice of experience, right? Uh, listen, I know when we got married, I said I'd stay out of your cases, but her name's Catherine Dobson. She's been missing about three hours. Doesn't look like she met a friend, does it? Morning shift should be in by now. Maybe they can dispatch can pull some bodies for a how's that? Hey, Corny. Hey, Michael. Tell them to pull everyone they can and get them down here. Juvie, Vice, everyone. I want a grid search of the entire neighborhood from Taylor to First. Uh, I want them to talk to the old ladies, kids, whoever. And I need a sector map now. You think someone's got her? Let's just get moving, all right? Yeah. Tammy, get me Steven to Chicago. Jack's got a flat tire. Thanks. Hey, Bob, do you think in between bites on that donut, you can let me know when Sid gets here? Mr. Lowenstein asked for him specifically. Yes, boss. 
Hey, buddy, you look a little stressed. I don't believe in stress. <laughs> Weekly numbers are all done. We didn't even lose that much money. Frank, you're a prince. You know it. It's been six hours. Where would he take her? To his house? If it's close. He's not going to want to go too far with her in the car, right? Mm -hmm. so if not home, someplace close, someplace private. The river. Yeah, there's lots of woods up there. It's pretty thick this time of year. Nice and private. We need twice as many men to cover this area. Detectives! We've got blood here! I took two steps and there it was. There's no trail, just a few drops. Is it human? I spent all afternoon looking for an injured rabbit. Uh, Sergeant, let's focus the search here. Line them up along this path and then walk them straight back into the woods. We're running out of time. All in! All in! Want everyone in a straight line? Fan out 20 meters on either side of me, okay? Spread out, spread out. Hustle up. Slow it down. I don't want you to miss anything, all right? We're going to take it over here. Straight back. Beth. She's right here. She was stabbed and strangled. I can't say yet which killed her. And it looks as if she was raped as well. Thanks, Kay. Call me when you know, all right? Sixteen years old. Let's go tell the parents. No, I'll do that. You stay here and get on this thing. All right? Come on. Let's get to work. Well, Mr. Hardaway, you are very welcome. You work hard. You just seem like a man who needed some baseball tickets. <laughs> no, thank you, Mr. Hardaway. Did he enjoy the game? Well, you bet. And next month, 75 visiting insurance brokers will be riding in Rainer limousines. You are so lucky you have me. A shameless manipulator. <laughs> it's 5 o'clock. I have a message from the office staff. Get out of here! Nice respect from our employees. We should fire them. You can't fire me. I've known you since you were three. Oh, I have to call Ron Baker at the bank. The clerks in seven that he's looking after. I'll take care of it. And I got Jack stuck in Chicago, Mr. Lowenstein. Uh, I'll... Come on, Kevin. Come on, Kevin. <laughs> You're going to take care of it. Hey, hey Jessica. Hey, how you doing? Jessica, we were catching caterpillars. Well, that sounds like fun. So we almost missed you. I'm trying to kick them out. Good plan. Aunt Jessica, can I see inside the limousines? Sure you can, sweetheart. Come with me. So you'll bring in the mail while we're gone? Yeah, no problem. I just came by to get the keys. Oh, they're in there, honey. Did you hear about Katie Dobson? Someone killed her. They found her body at the river this morning. Do they know who did it? No idea. That's what makes it so scary. God. Went to school with her mom. Well, you guys picked a good time to go out of town. Yeah. I gotta go have fun.
Can I catch you? Are you okay? Okay. Find the fish you want to catch. Okay? But I'm all tangled up now. No, you won't get untangled. Hold okay. on a second. I need your help. Water's delicious. Yeah. Mm. Listen, <clears throat> this is almost ready, so you should think about getting changed. not doing a job very well. We're gonna have to cut her salary. <laughs> hey, Carol, you here? I'll call her. All right. <sighs> You're cooking. <laughs> Hi, we're home. Oh, it was amazing, just perfect. Now, <laughs> listen, did you happen to leave the door unlocked? Carol says she's positive she locked up, and she's pretty good about things like that? Please tell me you did this. Oh, a couple of CDs. What else? Oh, a bottle of scotch. Can you believe that? Jess, I am so sorry. I, I, I could have sworn I locked no, the door. No, Carol. Sergeant Myers said he came in through this window and out through the front door. I was supposed to watch the house. Oh, forget it. You hardly took anything anyway. It's just weird. Oh, yeah, weird is right. It's almost like he just wanted to go through your things. Oh, I'm sure he was very bored. Okay, everything upstairs is fine. Do you have everything you need, Sergeant? Yes, sir, Mr. Rayner. Uh, I'll put everything out on the wire, but truthfully, I wouldn't be too optimistic. You know, it could have been teenagers. If you're going to keep the windows open, you might want to look into getting an alarm. Yeah, okay, well, we'll think about it. Thank you, sir. Okay. That's wonderful. Somebody robs your home, and the police say, get an alarm. Just wonderful. I do have to say, this guy was very tidy. Little piles of clothes. Screen placed neatly on the chair. You're kind of burglar. <laughs> I'm going to St. Louis with Frank tomorrow night for that meeting. And I think you should stay at Carol's. Uh, absolutely. I yeah, think Dan, it's a good Dan, idea. Dan, Dan, no, no, no. She lives right up the street. It'll take her four seconds to get here. Now let's talk about dinner. I'm starving. Let me help. What did you mean, my kind of burglar? I think we're heading out. We're gonna meet with Sandy at five about buying those stretch limos. Well, don't just talk numbers with Sandy. We'll get a better deal if he likes you. Well, I'll sweep him off his feet and be home by midnight. Okay. Stretch limos, can you believe it? Two tycoons, that's us. Look, honey, I know you and Frank love those riverboats, so if you want to stay overnight and gamble, that's fine, okay? Stay and gamble? Never crossed my mind. <laughs> hey, you ready to lose some money? This is supposed to be a business trip, remember? Oh, yeah. What's it going to be? Craps or blackjack? <laughs> See you tomorrow, Jess. Have fun. Back. 
then Is that you? Where is she? Where's my wife? Mr. Rayner? Yeah. I'm sorry. Is it bad? Is she alive? She's alive. Mr. Rayner, if you'll just take a minute, please. Look, I want to see her. I'm sorry, you can't. <laughs> Sir, your wife's been assaulted. I'm here to make sure she remains safe. Now go to the waiting area. Mr. Rayner, please! Let him go! Go see her. Go see Jessica. All right. He's sorry, okay? He's sorry. Let me get you a cup of coffee. Jesse? How was St. Louis? Did you win? What happened? Someone came into the house. I was asleep. I thought it was you. I thought it was you. It's okay. It's okay. Red Corny. How are you? I haven't seen you in, in years. Hi, Frank. I'm fine. A little overworked. Look, anything you can do to help these people out, I'd appreciate it. My family. I'll make it as easy as possible. Is she up for answering some questions? Yeah. We should go in. Dan. Danny. Come on, buddy. And I went to bed about 11. All right. About the attack. 
there's one thing I have to ask you straight away. Were you sexually assaulted? What? We should do a rape kit as soon as possible. I don't know. I, I was kind of out of it. She would remember if that happened. She did get a pretty good knock in the head. Well, she would remember something like that. You, you don't need a rape kit. Dan, I... I think it's a good idea. This won't be much longer now, Jessica. Just breathe, honey. Take a deep breath. Okay, just one more. It's almost done. Okay, hang in there. Good. Jessica? Brownish hair, baggy eyes, weak chin. He was taller than me, 5'10", maybe. He had rough skin. I smelled. You have a good eye, Jessica. You should have been a detective. <laughs> maybe my next life. OK, let's just go over this again from the beginning. You had dinner. You know, this is totally ridiculous, OK? She's been over it three times already. Why aren't you out there looking for this guy? Dan. Maybe you should wait outside, Dan. So that you can waste some more time? No. No, I think not. All right, detective time is over. I'm almost finished, Doc. Greg, did I ask a question? She needs sleep. Now go, get. <laughs> You're the doc. I'll see you tomorrow, Jessica. Well, your x-rays came back negative. That's a hard little noggin you've got there. <laughs> Let me take a peek. Dan, he's just doing his job. Yeah, that looks perfect. Now, I'm going to give you something to help you sleep. And Dan here is going to go across the street to Curly's Diner and get himself something to eat besides coffee. I recommend the uh, meatloaf sandwich, but then that's up to him. I'll be right outside. I promise. I sent Carol home. She's exhausted. How's Jessica? She's in the hospital, Frank. She was raped. How do you think she is? Greg says she gave a great description. That jerk cop wouldn't leave her alone. She's exhausted. Can't he tell that? Hey, you want a cup of coffee? No, I don't want a cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah, look, I'll get it. Glad she's okay, Dan. Well, if it isn't Sam Spade, you just can't seem to leave. I guess you're convinced that this guy is somewhere in the hospital. Is that it? Maybe he is. <clears throat> There's a few questions I wanted to ask you. I told you, I don't know anybody who would do something like this. Mm-hmm. You were in St. Louis all night, that's what you said, right? What are you getting at? You think I did this? To my own wife? People do it every day, Dan. Even worse than this. Dr. Rose, please give Mr. Nijek a volunteer service. Dr. Rose, please give Mr. Nijek a volunteer service. Dr. Rose, please give Mr. Nijek a Where are you going? I'm going to find this guy. What are you talking about? Do you know who he is? No, but I know what he looks like. You know what the police know. They're already looking. Hey, the police don't know squat, Frank. I know this town, and I'm going to find him. All right. Dan. <gasps> Where's Dan? Where's my husband? Honey, you should try to get some sleep. But where is he? I... I need to see him. He'll be back. Now, shh. Try to sleep. Dan, what is your problem? You know my problem. Dan, Dan, come on. Come on. Come on. You know. 
know every weasel in this town. Now you tell me what you've heard. I haven't heard anything. What are you talking about? You should be locked up, you know that? His wife was raped last night. I want to know who did this! Come on, come on, Dad, let's go home. Come on. Come on, come on, get in the car. <laughs> Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <sighs> 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 Who are these people? They're installing the alarm. Yeah. <sighs> hey, Bill. Hey, Mr. Rayner. Mrs. Rayner? My uh, boys will be out of your way in a few minutes. Uh, show you how it works? Sure. It's uh, all pretty simple. You've got uh, your security codes, your areas of coverage. This indicates the zones, doors, windows. Now, if there's someone in the house, the uh, idea... Can we... Can we please do this later? Sure, sure. Uh, why don't you go upstairs and get ready for bed? Jess, you should sleep much better now. Stay safe. Thanks, Bill. Dan? Dan? Everything is set, honey. The alarm is on. Go on to sleep. You're safe. Aren't you coming? Well, I don't want you to worry, all right? I thought I'd just keep an eye on things. You go on to sleep. Go ahead. myself right up to 300 pounds. Dan would love that. He's so relieved you're okay, he doesn't care how many cookies you eat. <laughs> no, Carol, it's been so awkward. He hasn't, he hasn't been affectionate. He can hardly look at me. Well, it's gonna take some time. It can't be easy. Yeah, stuck with damaged goods. Don't say that, he doesn't think that way. Don't even joke about that. Can you drop me at the police station? More well, police? You have to do the sketch this afternoon. I guess they want you to do it while you still remember. I could wait 10 years, I'll never forget. He just kept smiling the whole time. Sometimes I think he liked it so much he wants to come back. It's not gonna happen. He knows the police are looking for him everywhere. He's a million miles away by now. I'll take the cart back. Jess? 
another one. Cheekbones were sharper, higher. You're good. Most people come in here and they say, he was tall. OK. How's it look? It's him. Still in with the artist, huh? Detective, I called you this morning. Well, I knew you'd be coming in today, and I thought it'd be a better use of time. When I call you, you drop your donut and pick up the phone. Want to know what I did this morning, Dan? Yeah, I want to know what you did this morning. I got in at 6 a.m., and I spent five hours looking at tread templates, trying to find a match for that sneaker footprint in your walkway. Now, this isn't going fast enough for me either, but things take time, and there's nothing, nothing I can do about that. Detective? You know about this. Thank you. <clears throat> Sarah McMillan? My sister's a friend of the family, and she saw the police cars there this morning. I'm sure it's the same man who attacked me. Uh, the same man who attacked Katie Dobson. Uh, but they're kids, Jessica. But it's all in our neighborhood. Well, we're working that angle, but uh, believe me, I've been on the force a long time, and I've seen a few cases like this. Now, this kind of criminal, they have a very specific victim profile. And you and this kid and Katie Dobson, they uh, couldn't be more different than they do. It's him. I know it. Well, we won't ignore any possibility. But right now, I'd like to get this sketch to the deputy chief and get it out to the Illinois State Police. We'll check it out, Dan, but it isn't the same man. I don't know who this guy is, but can't you see what's happening? I mean, she's getting worse. You got to catch this guy fast. Please. We're trying. Uh, but what your wife is going through is uh, completely normal. None of it is normal. None of it. Just wait here, Mr. and Mrs. McMillan. I'll uh, get a car to take you home. Thank you. Um, I, I'm sorry. Uh, you're the McMillans, aren't you? Do we know you? Uh, no, I'm. I'm a. Uh... I'm Jessica Rayner, and I, I live over on North Maple, and, uh, well, I, I read what happened to your daughter. How is she? We don't know. She's in the hospital. Well, I'm here because, uh, because a man attacked me in my house. And I thought maybe that, um, can you tell me anything? Can you tell me how it happened? We were asleep. We heard her crying and we went in and he, he'd gone already. Did she tell you what he looked like? No, he put a pillowcase over her head. She didn't see anything. Did he say anything to her? He said he thought she was beautiful. Yeah. There's a Mrs. Rayner out here. She's very insistent. All right. Detective, I need to talk to you. I... Mrs. Rayner, Deputy Chief Lasser, won't you sit down? No, thank you. Detective Corning, it is the same man who attacked me that attacked Sarah McMillan. I talked to her parents. Look, you shouldn't. I asked about the attack, and they said. Mrs. Rayner, 
me make this clear. I understand your feelings of helplessness, and I, uh, I sympathize. But I won't tolerate interference in other active cases. It doesn't match the profile. He doesn't care about your profile. He's an animal. I saw his eyes. He raped me. And he raped Sarah McMillan, and he's probably raped other women, and he's gonna keep on doing it until someone stops him. Maybe she's not too far off, Chief. Three attacks on the north side in a month. I mean, something's going on. What was she doing? Talking to those people. Don't lose control of this case. I won't have freelance cops. Understand? Yes, sir. God, Jessica, you scared the hell out of me. Where did you go? Dan, they don't believe me. They don't think it's the same man. They Tell me when you're going to disappear like that again, okay? Please. Dan, you believe me, don't you? Jessica, I need to know where you are. How can I keep you safe if I don't know where you are? Now, let's go home, all right? Can we talk about this at home, please? Come on. I just have to go into the office for a couple of hours. If I don't get some deals finished, they're not going to be able to pay the loan this month. But it'll be all right, don't worry. If you feel weird or anything, call me. I'll have this with me all day. I can be home in four minutes. Memory one, that's the cellular number, OK?
Oscar is sitting on the chair that's a footprint through the bushes. He came in through the window. He... But it was right. Oh, Look, I understand she's upset. A lot of things could happen. Thank you very much. All right. Appreciate it. Look, Jesse, um, it's a stormy day. The screen could have been blown out. It's your first day. Look, home. I know what I saw. I am not crazy. It was him. I know it was. He came back. <sighs> OK. I'm heading out. I called Carol. She'll be here in a little while. I love you. Me too. Hi, honey. What is this? There was a girl raped and killed last year. Eileen Murphy, seven blocks away. He's been doing it since then. Jesse. Eileen Murphy, Katie Dobson, Sarah McMillan, and me. Four of us and two are dead. I'm just one of the lucky ones. Now I'm a witness. He needs to come back and finish the job. You know, I think you should put this all away. <sighs> Jessica. He came right into the house. He didn't even set off the alarm until after he left. Well, we cranked the sensitivity all the way up. That plus the new sensors will help. But I have to tell you, Mr. Rayner, no system's perfect. I don't care what it costs, Bill. Make it perfect, OK? OK. 
How you doing, Lou? Hey, Mr. Rayner. I did this, uh, I did this on all the doors. Suck the hole double deep, goes right into the frame. Look how long the bolt is. See, it's nice and long. What's this? Okay. Now, you'll want to keep this key someplace handy because uh, without it, you're gonna have to bust that wall down to get out of here. Yeah, thanks, Lou. Okay. Excuse me. You know, when these guys are done, it's gonna be just like Fort Knox. Doesn't matter, he'll find a way in. Jesse. He will. Jesse, he knows we have an alarm. He knows I'm waiting up for him. I mean, I mean, the police are practically camped out in the neighborhood. I mean, he'd be an idiot to try to come back here. Can you try not to worry? Please. Please. We are taking the break-in very seriously, Dan. Half the force is working on your case in one way or the other. Then why is this guy still out there? Because he's lucky. But he won't be lucky forever. It's already been forever. Greg, please, my wife is going crazy. She can't sleep. I mean, I can't sleep. When are you going to catch this guy? Dobson case. You know, this is every sex offender in the state of Illinois that owns a beige or brown sedan. Seems someone may have seen one parked by the river. The deputy chief cleared overtime as much as you need. You could get some other officers to do that for you. I know. I just, I don't want to miss anything. We did get a break today. The lab test came back. Seems as though some of the blood we found doesn't all belong to Katie Dobson. Our boys left us a calling card. Great. We should get preliminary DNA back in two weeks or so, and as soon as we catch him, he's as good as convicted. Um, <clears throat> I won't make it home for dinner tonight. Oh, you want to sneak out for a burger later? Hey, young lady, don't you know that fraternization with a senior officer is strictly against department policy? Yeah, I remember reading something about that somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, could you do me a favor? Anything. When a DNA test come back, I'd like to check them against the semen samples of Jessica Rayner and Sarah McMillan. You think they're connected? Maybe. Jess, we've been through this already. I told you, the guy lives in the neighborhood, right? Dan, please listen. He must, listen. because he seems to know his way around. I figure that if we cruise around long enough, we'll be able to spot him. Dan. Look, I called Carol, and she's on her way over. Please don't go. Hi. I don't want you doing this. You're preaching to the converted. Look, you pay taxes. Why don't we let the cops drive around all night? Damn, please. Jess, just make sure the alarm is set. How empty it is. There's nobody out here. So everybody must be pretty scared, huh? How's Jessica? She'll be fine once I catch this guy. Now keep your eyes open. Ah! Oh, it's you, Mr. Ray. Take care. Sure, out in force. I got stopped on the way over to your house. Yeah? Well, whatever they're doing, it isn't enough. I can't believe Dan just took off like that. I mean, with all this happened, I can't believe he'd leave you alone at night. Oh, I'm not alone. For God's sakes, Jess, he shouldn't be out there roaming the streets like some vigilante. You were almost killed. He should be home. In case anything else happens, he should be here to protect you. I don't want him to do that, okay? 
I don't want him to protect me. I just want him to... I just want him to hold me. Oh, Jess. He hasn't touched me. Uh, not once, not since, uh... He's trying to be so strong, and, and I don't care. I just... I don't know if he wants me anymore, and uh, I want him so much. I need him. Dad, it's getting late. Maybe we should go home. Look, it's him. It's him! It's Rick Stanzo. He lives in the neighborhood. He's been living here for 10 years. Rick, I'm really sorry. I I'm sorry, Rick. Let's say, what are you trying to do? Waving a gun around, you're gonna kill somebody. He's out there, Frank. He's up there. I started this, not me. You're acting crazy. Crazy. I don't think he's coming back. But we're set up for him this time. You can go to sleep. Just go to sleep. I'm staying up for him. Say, I'm staying up for that bastard. What? What is it? Let's go to bed. No, no. We both can't sleep. You sleep. I'll stay awake. I'll keep watch. Man, honey, come to bed, please. I want us to make love. I need you. No. I shouldn't. No, I have to check the windows. No, you go. You go to sleep. I'll keep watch. I'll be here. I will. I promise I'll be here. Jessica, how are you feeling? I'm all right, Detective. I wanted to know if there was any way that I could see the police report on my case. Those reports are not for the public. Why would you want to see that anyway? I just need to make some sense of all this. You'll have to look at him here. Mrs. McMillan, I'm Jessica Rayner. We met at the police station. I remember you. I was wondering if we could, um, Talk about the attack. This is where he went in. This is Sarah's room. She doesn't. She sleeps in our room now.
Dan? Dan Renner's office. No, Steve, he's on another line. Yeah, I'll give him the message. Bye. I'll leave you alone. Everything was so good. The business was finally coming together. We had some extra money to spend for the first time. Everything was so good, then this. <laughs> In one night, I go away and uh, everything good just disappears. All gone. In one night. Dan, things will get better. It just takes time. We've got the alarm. And I stay up all night just to make sure that nothing happens. And now she's reading her police files and uh, copying articles out of newspapers. She doesn't think I can protect her. She's been through hell. All the alarm systems in the world aren't going to make her forget that. She's got to put this behind her. How? You've got to start doing things again, normal things. Believe me, it's the only way you're going to feel right again. Oh, hi. Hi. Are you okay? You know, I called all day. I just needed to get out of the house. Uh -huh. What's that? You having a cleaning pit? No. <laughs> Got a grill tomorrow night. I invited uh, Carol and Frank and some of the people from the office. Party? No, it's not a party. It's a barbecue. You know, then I get to wear my funny chef's hat. I don't know, damn it. Oh, Jessica, please. We need it. We both do. I mean, we need to make, we need to make things normal again, okay? Okay. Great. All I need now is a funny chef's hat.
five nine, blonde, blue eyes, thirty five, married. Hubby was upstairs, didn't hear a thing. I know it doesn't make any sense. Two women murdered, two more raped. Half the police in the city are tracking down leads, and we can't connect them. When the hell is that DNA test coming? I don't know. Next week. Look, I know you're the veteran at this. But none of this matches up with any predator rapist I've ever read about. I mean, kidnappers don't do break-ins. And Dobson and McMillan's two kids, and Glenn and Rayner are two grown women. They don't even look like each other. Well, they're all pretty tall and blonde. Yeah, except for Sarah, Sarah McMillan. McMillan. Yeah. Throw her into the mix and it messes everything up. I know. What does a dark kid have to do with any of this? She looks like her father. Her mom was tall and blonde. I mean, he wasn't after Sarah. He was after the mother. We're going to have to pull every unsolved murder or rape in the past five years, see if there's any other cases. Yeah, and I'm going to go back over all the tests and see what matches up. When that DNA comes in, we can be sure. I don't need any DNA. I'm sure already. Come on. That one burnt to a crisp for me, then. Absolutely. There you go. You know, Frank, you were absolutely right. This is a great idea. Thanks. Hey, free food. Thanks enough. She knows about that woman last night, huh? Mm. She doesn't want to talk about it. She's not getting any better, Frank. I'm heading out to the store. We need some more trash bags. Could you stay? I don't want to leave her alone. Yeah, sure thing. Do you think we should pull out those bushes? Because he could hide in there. He could hide in there like he did before and just jump out. Yeah, I could do it tomorrow. Dan and I'll trim them back. Maybe. Maybe that would be better. Maybe that would be a good idea. Mm. You need a hand? Come on, move over. I'm an expert. He killed another woman last night, you know? Yeah, I know. He's coming back for me. He, he needs to kill me because I've seen him. Jessica, you're totally right to be scared. But have you considered seeing someone, you know, a psychiatrist, someone, someone to help you deal with this obsession? It's not an obsession. Well, maybe that's not the right word, but... Maybe you don't need a psychiatrist. Yeah, tell him I'll hold. He was in the house. I mean, he was five feet away. He only ran because he heard a man's voice. What if she'd been alone? God knows what would have happened. She's been saying all along he was coming back. She's been saying it all along. Do you believe her now? Yes, Frank, I believe it. You do? Well, of course you do. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, well, look, tell him to hurry up, huh? Look, Frank, we have every available car focused on the north side. We've pulled everyone, traffic, vice, office cops. Everyone's on triple shifts working this case looking for this guy. Detective. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. He's in the house in the middle of the day. Huh. This guy's got some guts. Jess, are you OK? I have to go. What are you doing? I have to go. I have to leave. Jess, where are you going? Stay here. I have to move away. Another city. Someplace where he can't find me. Far away. Jess, you're not going anywhere. We grew up on this street. We know who lives in every single house and who lived here before them. This is our street. No. It's his. It's his now. Jess, stop it, please. Look. I'm your sister. And I love you. But you cannot run away from this. You are so much stronger than you think you are. Honey, he cannot make you leave your home. This is your home, and you are going to have to fight for it. I don't know if I can. Oh, 
So, what do we got? Well, the guys from Vice volunteered to do foot patrols. You know, I figure that, and with the extra sector cars, we should have someone passing by here every 10 minutes. Good. I'll see you at the station. Yeah. Police are on it now. They know the score. Now things are gonna happen. Police can't protect them. I can't protect them. I know Corny. He's gonna nail this guy. Go home, Frank. Please. Just go home. Are you all right? I'm fine. When was the last time you got a night's sleep? Come to bed. No. I should stay down here. In case. I don't need you down here. I need you in bed with me. Look, I know. I know that you don't want to touch me. And I understand I feel dirty, too. Dirty. No. God, Jessica. You could never touch the things about you that I love. Then what is it, Dan? I have to stop him. I can't let it happen again. Let what happen? You didn't let anything happen. I did. I stayed. While I was playing blackjack, he came into our house. If I had come home, none of this would have happened. It's all my fault. Don't you see? I should have been here to protect you. Sweetheart, you cannot protect me, and the police can't protect me. I have to protect myself. Look, I can be scared, but I can't be helpless. But what if he should come back? He will come back. When he does, we'll both be ready for him, both of us. We won't be helpless anymore. Come to bed. down. Always keep the gun down by your side. You sure you want to do this? You've always hated guns. I do. Even more now. All right, bring it up. Release the safety. Yeah. Both eyes open. One breath. Let it out slowly. Hey, you're a natural at this. Huh. Wonderful. Keep it down. Keep it down. Okay. All right, this time. Start with the gun down, then bring it up. In case you okay. have to do this for real. You don't have to spend all day aiming. All right, on the count of three. Okay. You ready? Uh-huh. One, two, three. So much for being a natural. All right, well, you'll have to do what the rest of us do. Practice. Come on. Ready? Bring it up, fire. Again. Okay, let's start again at the beginning. Eileen Murphy was killed last year, August 1st, which was a Sunday. Can you be sure it was the same guy? No, but it's a good guess. Right. Now, Katie Dobson was killed June 10th. He broke into our house on the 19th, and I was attacked on the 21st. Okay, so if it was the same guy, why did he wait a year? Yeah. 
And why did he attack you and Katie in the same month? Maybe he had a thing for summer, or I don't know. Windows are open in the summer. Hey, smart guy you married. Why is he doing that? No, oh, he thinks better when he's cleaning. Now, this guy likes to come after we've had guests. Hmm. That makes sense. Had friends over, had a few beers, you relaxed? Yeah. They set off our alarm on the 1st and the 11th. When was Debbie Gwynn killed? Gwynn, in July 31st. He likes the number one, doesn't he? That's it. What? What are you guys getting at? The dates. Days with one in them. That's when he likes to go out. Just half the days in the month have a one in them. The 1st, the 11th, and the 21st. Those are the days he likes best. That doesn't make sense. Why? Because he's nuts, Frank. That's why. And we don't need to know why. We just need to know when he's coming back so we can catch him. And now, we know. See, we all kind of look alike. Tall, with blonde hair, except Sarah McMillan. So I thought he was after the mother. You don't have to convince me, Jessica, because the DNA report came back this afternoon and it's a match. You're right, it's the same man. Are you absolutely sure you don't want to come and work with us? Look, the, the really important thing is right here. Take a look at this calendar. What are these, all the attacks? See, he seems to have an obsession with the number one. I don't know, Jessica, it's a good theory, but uh, Sarah McMillan was attacked on the 22nd. She was attacked at 3 a.m. He was out looking for her on the 21st. He just didn't find her until after midnight. See, he's crazy, but he's predictable. Uh -huh. Now, Saturday is the 11th, his favorite day. And? We could be ready for him. He likes to come after a party. We'll throw a party. He likes to come in that window. We'll, we'll open the window. And we'll keep the alarm off. He'll feel totally welcome. And when he comes in, we'll be waiting for him. It's a long shot. And I don't know if I can get Lassa to commit to manpower. Detective, I cannot explain this logically, but I know in here that he's coming on Saturday night. OK. She's scared, but she's thinking clearly. She wants one cop on post in her home, if we can spare. Do we have anyone to spare? I know it'll mean triple shift patrols every night. And I know we'll have to take a lot of people off the street. It's a crazy idea, but I think it's worth it. Let's be straight here, Chief. We may be getting closer to this guy, but we're a long way from catching him. And hell, I didn't think he'd come for Jessica again. But he did. She knows a little something about the way this creep thinks. All right. Mrs. Rainer and her gut have been pretty sharp so far. Maybe we should start listening to them. Greg, you got the duty. We'll start tonight. Keep it going for two weeks, and we'll uh, reassess. Beth, you coordinate backup. Yes, sir. Thanks, sir. Maybe we'll get lucky. I've been on this job 27 years. I thought I'd gotten used to it all. Last three weeks, I've slept in a hall outside my daughter's bedroom. You believe that? Yeah. You get lucky, both of you. You catch this maniac. Yes, sir. tonight. <clears throat> Come on, smile. It's supposed to be a party. Maybe this was a terrible idea. Do you want to back out? <laughs> no. I want it to be over.
Please be careful. Okay. Thanks. Carol? Hi. Hi. Should have come for the party. Van's a grill king. Truly amazing. Well, I have to spend some time with my beautiful wife. She's starting to think I live here. Well, the dishes are done. We can't have him breaking into a dirty house, can we? What about this one? His favorite window? Leave it open. Well, now that the cavalry's here, I guess I'll head home. Thanks, Frank. Good night, Frank. Good night, Dan. Look, if he does come by, don't bother saying halt. Just shoot him. Bang, bang, you're dead. All right, Frank. Have a good night, huh? Good night. I gotta change. Okay, there's food in the fridge and cookies in the cabinet, and I don't know what else to say except thank you. Greg, um, you be careful, okay? Good night. I'm so glad you're with me. Me too. Around real slow. What? Are you all right? Okay, okay. All right, stay here. Are you okay? Stay there. The suspect is in the house. He's armed. I say again, the suspect is armed. Approach with caution. What happened? I had him. And he bolted. I got him cornered in the kitchen. Are you sure you're okay? I'm okay. I'm okay. He took a few shots at me, but I'm okay. Now look, you stay up there. Don't worry about it. I'll get him. You keep that door closed. Greg, stay there. Please, let's go back to the room. Jesse. Jesse, I can't wait here. I might have to try to go help. Okay. You go back and you shoot anybody who comes through that door. Don't worry, I'll knock first. Right? Go back upstairs. 
chance. Not a chance, man. Lock that behind us. has left the premises. He's gone out the back end. chance they got away. We got 150 cops on the north side, Jessica. We'll get them. This way, please. Greg, are you
you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. How's the search going? Nothing. Yet. What happened? <laughs> I had him. He was right there, second faster than it's all been over. Jessica was right all along. There. Now move it around a little. Those were some nasty cuts. That's for the pain. Thank you. Dr. Gorin, cardiac intensive care. Dr. Gorin, cardiac intensive care. Welcome, Beta Dine on that and get me a suit. What did they say? It's only going to be about another 10 minutes, so just be calm, all right? Don't, don't Real bloody mess. Yes, sir. Why don't you get these spooners? Mm -hmm. Just working in my shed. Well, we're going to have to take care of them because they're pretty deep. All right. Stay about, okay? Looks like you're gonna need about 12 stitches. And I can do them right here if you like. Just about anything. Let's go. Danny, you can't. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have a right to an attorney. If you do not have one or cannot afford one, one will be appointed for you. Do you understand these rights as I have explained them to you? Do you understand these rights? I can handle it. Yeah, I know you can. Okay. 